late fall bass. It can be boom or bust. They just don't want it. And sometimes those picture perfect fall days are great for everything but the fish. Still, serious lake commandos like Steve Panaz and Mandy Urich have never shied away from a challenge and don't plan to start today. I love fishing new water. The challenge is always the same. Find fish, trigger strikes. Ooh, that's a big fish. But what I really love is beating the other guy. I got a fish. This is Lake Commandos. Love October. The leaves are on the ground. Water. <laughs> Did you hear the temp was this morning? Yeah, it's 28 degrees. <laughs> I wonder why there's so much frost on the cover this morning. 28 degrees means we should be ice fishing in an ice house. No, we should be in the boat fishing small. Late fall fishing is not for the meek, but a chill in the air and dropping water temps means fish will likely be actively feeding in preparation for winter. For Steve Panaz and Mandy Urich, fall is prime time for bass. But every lake is different, and today's lake presents some unique challenges. The thing that I'm shocked about, it's the water clarity is 18 feet. Succubus screen. Eight? Wow. 18. Wow. This battleground would be intimidating to any commando. Over 5,000 acres of crystal clear water, nearly all of it a maze of steep breaking structure including mid-lake rock reefs and main lake points. The options for finding actively feeding fish are almost too numerous for a single day mission, which is straightforward but will be anything but easy. The commandos will try to track down and catch late fall, clear water, smallmouth and largemouth bass. As always, there's a premium on picking the best presentation. 28 degrees this morning, 18 foot of visibility. I'm telling you what, this is gonna be a tough commando mission. What a gorgeous body of water. I think these fish are gonna be shallow. I think they're gonna be moving up on the rock piles. I'm gonna go with a new bait from Berkeley called the Cutter. It's a dynamite jerk bait. I'm gonna go with a, a color that has a subtle chartreuse bottom, but more of a natural color that looks good in this water. I'm gonna throw it on 10 pound Berkeley trilling, 100% fluorocarbon. I like the fact when you fish jerk baits, it sinks a little bit keeps the bait more subtle and the fish don't see the line. For rod, this is a seven foot medium action Abel Garcia Veritas rod. This is a Revo SX. It's in a six four to one retrieve ratio. If I need to go faster or slower, I can adjust throughout the day, but this is a good rig. Hey, Mandy's a great fisherman. She's really uh, a fun to be in the boat with, but today she's going down. Steve wants to go with a jerk bait. That's fine and hit him hard. Me, on the other hand, I'm gonna go with the finesse side. I'm going finesse fishing today with a drop shot. I got my drop shot rigged with the Berkeley 3-inch Powerbait Pro Jig Worm. One thing with the water clarity being 18 feet, line's gonna be a huge factor with that. I'm going with Trilene's 100% fluorocarbon, lowest visibility there is, it's great sensitivity. I think this is the bait that's gonna take Steve down. Well, this lake gets even better looking with the sun coming up. Wow. This lake was actually intimidating today. Not that it was too big at 5,000 acres, but the fact that it, it, it was immense amount of cover. So oh, look at the rock here. Look at this. Seven feet, 31 feet. That, that, looks, that looks interesting. So my plan was to move up shallow, cover rock, cover some grass, cover brake lines, and see if we can get on the fish. We're in 30 feet right here, and I'm marking fish down on the bottom. Those, I, those clearly could be just about anything, but I, they're probably smallmouth that have slid off these flats over the cold night. These baits cast phenomenally, don't they? Yeah. I like a little touch of chartreuse for smallies. I don't know if the smallies feel the same way. Look at this break. It's like, take one step and fall off the edge of the earth. 
We're at cast length from three feet of water and we're in 30. Fish. Fish? Yeah. Talk to me. It's heavy. Probably a pike. <laughs> it's Molly. Nice one too. <laughs> nice one too. Oh, it's a, is that a largey? It's a big, large mole. Wow. Just a tank. <laughs> nice. Oh, what a strong fish. Man. Okay, let me turn him around. Ready? Yep. Here he comes. Nice. Wow. Boom. <laughs> that is a mule. What a sow. Look at that. Gotta love the cutter in the fall, baby. It's just, look at that beast. Look at the belly on that thing. Oh, I can't even hold it. Like wow. Look at that. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Good guys are in the lead. Nice net. That, that, that's, that's five. That's a five. Yeah. We're fishing today. And you know what? Shallow. Shallow. A quick start on a cold morning for the commandos, but is it a sign of things to come? Or will the fall fish get fickle? Lake Commandos is brought to you by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Power Pole, shallow water anchor, swift, silent, secure. Abu Garcia, for life. Fraybill, trusted gear since 1938. Berkeley Power Mate. Fish bite and won't let go. And by Quebec Outfitters. Enter to win your ultimate fishing trip. On a crystal clear day, Commandos Steve Panaz and Mandy Urich are on the hunt for late fall bass. A year ago, Steve and Mandy slugged it out on a big largemouth bite, with Steve coming out on top. But as a veteran tournament angler, writer, speaker, and angling educator, Mandy Urick is more than ready for today's rematch. The commando format itself is an awesome idea. I mean, it's one thing, it's almost not even fair, but people know the lake and they've been on it before, they can call and get intel, or you can spend weeks researching it online or looking at forums. The commando format throws all that out the window. You just don't know. We find out the morning of what lake we're going to, it's daunting, just not knowing what to do and trying to put a pattern together on the fly after not, you know, not seeing that body of water. This one by far though, was the most daunting challenge I've ever had. You add all that structure, that depth, that water clarity and bluebird conditions, it was a heck of a challenge. On a Good fish? Yeah. That's exactly where we caught that last one. Uh-oh. Molly, nope, large, another, another large. Another large you. I'm gonna just hold them under it if you wanna pick them up. Yeah. There you go. Came up with one just about in the same spot where Steve caught his. Problem is, they're green, not brown. I'm pretty sure the point of today was chasing smallies, but a bass is a bass, and I'm glad to say it, it's one to one. Clear water. Sight bait. It was a natural to go to a cutter today because this bait will draw them up from deep water. It'll trigger strikes in shallow water. And if they move up tight in this super clear water, these things are so realistic looking, they're gonna eat. As it turned out, we caught some really nice bass today on the cutter. That's a bass! bass. No! <laughs> no, no, no! Where'd you put the pliers? I hit him on you. How do you like the cutter? Not that we're keeping track or anything, but I'm up. You know, one of the keys when you're fishing a jerk bait is make sure you got a rod that's got a softer tip. It, it starts the bait a little bit slower. It's not as, as aggressive and a softer tip, a medium action rod is actually a good choice. And you'll notice that the jerk stroke is down and it's also always done on a slack line. And what that does is it gives the bait more, more uh, erratic action down below and it usually slides back and forth. This cutter slides back and forth. But the other thing is when it cuts, it, it has a, a side to side wobble 
that goes, it cuts with the wobble. And these fish, typically what they do is they just slide up and grab it. And you know, it's clear water. You can see these baits from probably 20, 30, 40 feet. These fish are coming a long way to bite. You got one following it. You got it. <laughs> Watch them right here. <laughs> I'm gonna swing up. Yes! Good fish too. What's a largey doing on rocks? I jerked the, the thing. I thought it was the I thought it was the bait rolling. It was the fish going. Choo, choo, choo. And he finally grabbed it right next to the boat. New Berkeley cutter with this coffin bill lip. Good fish too. Nice. One of the key things to keep in mind in your maintenance program is your water pump. Your water pump is responsible for keeping the engine cool. It draws water through the grates at the bottom of the lower unit, up through the middle of the outboard, around the power head, and back out through the propeller. You can tell your water pump's functioning properly if the water flow from the telltale hole is strong. The important thing to remember about the water pump, it features a rubber impeller located inside a stainless steel cup. This impeller uses water as a lubricant. Without water, the impeller will soon break down due to excess heat. That's why you should never run your outboard or even turn it over without adequate water supply. If you run in brackish or turbid water, check your impeller annually and replace it when necessary. When it comes to achieving peak performance, maintenance matters. This segment is brought to you by Yeti Coolers. Yeti, built for the wild. Well, I tell you what, we're struggling right now. We switched over to Mandy's pattern for fishing drop shot and I love the pattern. In fact, that was a pattern I probably was gonna pick if, if uh, she hadn't and the, the question is, there is so much structure in this lake and it is so clear and the conditions are brutal in terms of just flat, calm, isn't it, there isn't a cloud in the sky and we're struggling to find fish. We just don't know, are they holding on, on main brake lines? And these brake lines are so steep that it's very hard to find fish on it because the, the sonar unit, as it sends the cone down, it doesn't read those very well. And uh, so what we're doing now is just, we got on a, a flat out in the middle of the lake, we're staying on a deeper edge and we're gonna ring it and cast up into the shallows. Look at these fish down here. Got him. <laughs> Smally too. Look at this. Yes. Not a giant, but you know what? As tough as this is today, we've got a rock pile right behind us. There's smallmouth all over it. And uh, we went to the drop shot. This isn't a big one. There's a lot bigger fish on it, but it's a start. We're getting bit. We got a bite. They're right along the break where that, where that, where it drops from, say, we're in 11 feet of water right here. You got four minutes left in your pattern, and it's just, it's, it hasn't produced like the, the jerk bait. It's the only one that has produced since we were supposed to be targeting smallmouth today and not largemouth. We caught fish. Uh oh. Uh -oh. oh no! <laughs> Summon up. Was that a smallmouth? That was a smallmouth. Uh. As I was saying, it's the only one that's actually produced a smallmouth strike, so. I have to admit, when you have a perfect day like today <clears throat> and the fishing's tough, it really kind of changes. You just don't want the day to end because you just want to get, I get charged up when the bite is tough. I, I actually prefer tough bites than lights out bites, but this one, this one's really tough. Well, woman, the drop shot, as good as I thought it was gonna be, is not working. We need to switch. We need to go back to the pattern that produced the cutter. I'm 
One of the biggest advancements in fishing in recent years is fluorocarbon line and castable fluorocarbon line. In presentations like drop shotting or presentations like jerk baiting, the line is a perfect choice for this. It casts extremely well. It's, it's got enough stiffness that it's not going to back into the hook, so you're going to have lots of high percentage cast. It actually is invisible, so if a fish moves up to see the bait, they're not going to be line shot. And number two, it sinks. And so when you have a presentation like a cutter where you, you jerk it and, it and it moves and then it pauses, that line's going to kind of settle down a little bit and give it a little bit more lifelike action. Fluorocarbon for jerk baits is an awesome line choice. I got one. <laughs> You're in the sun, what do you got? Hey, there's some rock here too. And it's a, it's a smallie. Is it the net? No, I'm gonna lift you. There. Nice. I don't like to see this. What you're seeing is a fish that came up and, and basically just grabbed the bait by the last hook. I like to see it when they grab the bait like this. This fish wasn't really grooving on this presentation, but we had enough hook to get him in the boat. Not a giant, but a smallie. And that's the third one uh, we've had in the last 15 minutes and they've all come in shallow water. It's been a tough grind for the commandos, but the move back to the cutter just might be the key down the stretch. Fish. On a fall day this beautiful, it's hard to believe the fishing wouldn't be just as good. But fish don't play by our rules, and today's commando mission, to find and catch late fall bass, has been a real battle. Still, Steve Panaz and Mandy Urich aren't about to wave the white flag. I don't know if it's a pattern issue or if the fish just aren't in the mood to eat. I don't think the fish are in the mood to eat. Fish. Really? Yeah. You gonna jump? You gonna jump? Right here. Is that a largey or a smallie? It's a smallie. Oh yeah. The fact that we're getting small fish just means this bite is not on at all. And uh, I mean, I know there's some three to five pound smallies in this lake, and I don't know if they're seeing our bait, but we're not getting bit. According to the net surveys on this lake, there was a good population of big smallmouth, 15 to 17 inch bass. And really what I expected us to catch today were three, four and five pounders. We didn't have anything like that in smallmouth. In fact, most of the fish went from a pound to a pound and a half, maybe two, two and a quarter pounds. I can tell you what, we covered a lot of shallow water and, and it was so easy to see bottom and we just didn't see that many fish, especially big bass. Yeah, look at you, finally. <laughs> yeah, I know, finally. <laughs> and, that water. and he ate the front of the bait, too. I keep him out of the net. There you go. I keep him out of my hand. He made a good choice on that uh, bait. Three minutes into a simple color change, going with a perch pattern with some much more natural base than the one that I was using before. Finally produced my first boated smallmouth of the day. If I honestly, if we came here tomorrow, I wouldn't fish anything different because it's gonna be overcast tomorrow and I think those fish are gonna turn on. I mean, that's, <laughs> I know that's what you want me to say, but that's, uh, that's what I would do. I think we had the right stuff today. I think both of them should have worked, but it's overall, it's just the conditions weren't right. They're, they just weren't biting. I mean, if they're turned off and they're not hitting a finesse bait and they're not hitting a, a, a jerk bait, I mean, what else are we gonna throw? We sure saw a lot. There's a fish. <laughs> Oh, that's a whopper. <laughs> oh. oh. I hate to tell you something. Oh, it's time. It's time. Maybe you're glad, I don't know. <laughs> well, you've been a mighty competitor today, but it didn't work out in your favor today, but that's fun for you. I did too, thanks for the offer. Yeah, it's too bad the fishing wasn't primo, but we're gonna have to do it again. Promise? Promise. All right, it's a deal. Promise. You get to buy dinner tonight.
Okay. All right, let's go. Hey, if you want to win what works for us, visit lakecommandos.com or check out our Facebook page. I'm Captain George Mitchell. This is Coastal Chaos. Welcome to sunny South Florida. We're going to be doing a little bit of summertime dolphin fishing today. We did our homework on the internet, we got a good starting point, but now we're down on the boat and we're going to utilize the TZ Touch. That's our Furuno system. Now we can get some real time data off of this, but we can also do a lot of planning based on our cartography. All right, so now we're arrived. We're here where we think the fish are going to be. I want to make sure I've got my entire spread ready. I got my bigger plastics, those are my chuggers and my jet heads. Those are going to go in the mid, mid water back there. And then I've got my little yellow nylure. I love this thing. It's a little lead head jig. It's a half ounce jig. I'm going to put it way, way, way back. It's a dolphin catch and fool. But I'm also going to have ready is my fish finder. This is the Sabeel Popper. Now the cool thing about this is if we see birds working or perhaps maybe even see something floating, we can cast it towards that chug, chug, chug. That'll get the fish's attention and oftentimes bring them right to us. Another great tool when you're dolphin fishing is going to be a set of binoculars, maybe even two. The old guys are good, but they're not what they used to be. Got a bite, got a bite, got a dolphin. That's what we came for. All right, the important thing to remember about dolphin is there's usually more than one. Now that's the weed line that we caught this fish off. We had just gone through the first one and we were approaching the second one. Remember the beauty of that weed is it holds all kinds of microscopic fish that the other fish are eating that this dolphin's eating. Now that's what we came for. That's a perfect size schoolie. That's about a six pounder, seven pounder right there. Coastal Chaos, tips for serious saltwater anglers. 